Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is the Wix Online Meeting 121. Happy Valentine's Day to all of you. Um, I have a little bit of a cold, so if I sound funny, that's what it is. Uh, as always, these meetings are recorded for those people that were unable to attend right here, right now, and we've got some interesting stuff to talk about at the back end of this meeting. So let's go ahead and look at the agenda, which it doesn't look that exciting, but it is. Uh, triage. We'll do triage because we always do that, get it out of the way. As usually about six, eight bucks, something like that. And then we'll talk about our Wix 311 plan from here out um, and what we're going to do since we had some really cool progress over the weekend. And then we'll take questions, comments, things that people want to talk about at the end, like we always do. All right, moving on. Triage. Bob, you ready? I'm ready. All righty then. Starting at the bottom. Creating assigned bundles identified as a threat by Trend Microsoft. So this ended up being, I think, at the very end, it's that they can't write the one once key. Yeah. So, can we fix the title on this issue? Uh, is it possible to edit it? Yep, yep. Awesome. Great. Um, so, why don't we fix the title, and I'd say we should toss this into Wix 4, because I don't know if we would take it in 3. Maybe, we, I don't know. Don't know what to do about this. We're getting more and That's more. That's the problem. We're getting more and more of this where people are this run once key. Uh, Unfortunately, it's either. very malware like behavior. Which, you know, when you think about it, it makes sense. You say you got infected by a virus, but really what happened is that you ran an installer that installed the virus. Yeah. So. Um, I don't know. I'm torn. Thoughts, people? Sean? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, at, at a certain point, I think we have to accept that we might need to, you know, stop using run once or make it optional, which I hate, but... Yeah, um, or just, yeah, just say, all right, cool, we couldn't write run once. That means you won't get this behavior, this extra behavior from burn. Well, the problem is we we haven't... <laughs> We we get blocked, but not necessarily notified. And in the meantime, there's you know red alert sirens going on. So off. my understanding is that run once key just comes back as access denied. But also with UI. With UI? Oh, is there yeah. UI? Pump? I see. <sighs> yeah. All I right. I think there's a nice solution well, here. We're, we're not going to design this here. Worse. Uh, would we take it in three, or are we just talking about something that goes in four? It depends on the type of change. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't, yeah, without knowing, you know, what we're going to do. Um, if if we were to drop run once, then we're, you know, changing behavior. We need um, to rethink a lot if we do that. Um, yeah. And I certainly agree with Jacob. This is not, yeah. Run once it's documented. It's, it should be allowed. What what I've uh, heard is that these are settings that you can set in the yeah. AV to lock down the machines even further. Right. right. So this is this is IT admin going you know crazy with power. Yes. Um, I, all right. Here's my proposal. I think we've put this in four because we need a design and we may do a thing there and then in so doing we may decide here's something we could do for three. Yep. I like that because we're not sure. going to do. More than that. Oh, I've lost my mouse cursor. Almost, almost there it is. Catastrophic failure from Torch Utility. That's kind of cool. Um, oh, this is a guy that has a private build of Wix and is old. And he shot, probably should try to use 310. And he said he'd do it next week. That was 11 days. Um... Uh, do we keep this open for a little longer, um, or? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'll ping and say, you know, um, yeah, you have until next meeting, yeah, yeah. kind of thing. Yep. Cool. Um, building Wix projects that generate messages may deadlock a VST via, yeah, right, I remember seeing this, it's like, cool, someone said you could... You could get a deadlock. Great. So they said, let's remove this performance optimization, which is a huge performance optimization when you build this item as built, it turns out. And they don't tell us why. Yeah. That's, I really wanted that, that information. Because, yeah, it's performance optimization, but it's, you know, again, 
we're doing something completely legal. So if 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 VSTS build deadlocks, is that VSTS build or Wix doing something that? Or so, we, maybe we have a bug in the way we're doing it that only gets exposed in this particular case, which is entirely possible. So that's fine as well. Yep, I agree. Do we keep this open for another week? Ping it and one more. Yeah, I'm getting kind of. It's eleven days. It's the same time. Thing. Yeah. Uh, we'll do it once. Yeah, yeah, we'll do it once, and then we can move more aggressively. Dark doesn't know how to decouple MSI configure services action. Oh, it's kind of funny. Uh, will we take it three? Uh, no, no. This has been there since uh, you know. Well, I believe it was you who did this work. So uh, um, it was, I, I remember because you and I did MSI five zero and ah, uh, and I missed this one. You, you you got you got uh, services. Uh, but yeah, no. This yeah, it's obviously been missing for, for long time. years. So, cool. so 4x then? Yeah, that works for me. Sure. <laughs> Random issue. I love this. So we just close it. <laughs> I love it. Suppress so well, it has to be closed randomly. Yeah, right. <laughs> I like it. So I'll, I'll roll with the support again. question. As it seems random. Oh, that's what they mean by random. <laughs> okay, I don't remember. Oh, yeah. So when they get more data, we'll take this. They can send more data when we have it. Uh, support project harvesting and heat MS build. Oh, yes. Sean was talking about this. Um, right. So you, you figured out part of this, and now there's a little bit left, and that's what this bug is about, Sean? Right. Yeah. All right. And there's still an issue tracking it, but that's open or something? Or no, this is it. Huh. Duh. This is the issue in tracking the remainder of the problem. Well, I didn't technically check in any of it, so... <laughs> I see. Uh, Basically, I did the wick... I did the build part of... Here's the wrapper. Here's our classes that will run under MS Build 15. But now we have to figure out, at runtime, how is Heat going to figure out where to load the MS Build DLLs from? Yeah, so I'm I'm... What do you want to do with the work that you've done thus far? Is it at all useful, or is it just sit in a pull request that we can't get rid of? It's it's really not useful because he can't load the MS Build 15 DLLs. So it, if we put it in there right now, whenever you try to harvest a project with the tools version of 15.0, it's just going to fail because it can't load the MS Build 15 DLLs. So can you create a... If you're using Harvest Project, does that work from... Sorry. If you have Harvest Project in a Wix proj that you're invoking from an MS Build 15, does that work? Uh, I haven't... I didn't try that. Okay. I, so uh, basically what... So we have two bits here. One is... You know, we have harvest projecting, project, uh, what's it, what do we call that? Project harvesting, um, using heat.exe, which I think is broken and probably can't be unbroken. Um, but then there's harvest projects, harvest, oh my god, project harvesting, um, via a Wix proj, which is already running MS Build 15. That is more interesting. Okay, it might work. Well, yeah, it might work just, you know, automatically. Uh, well, I, I... All right. We can toss this to Forex, Sean. If you want to keep it, you can. Um, I was just thinking it might be good if you if you have a fork, if you just stuck this on a branch so and referenced this to that branch so that, hey, the code you did doesn't have to be thrown away. Okay, whoever picks this up next, start with this code kind of thing. Okay, yeah, I I do have a branch right. that I so, push that has half of the work. Right. So I, I just don't want to lose that work because you've already done it. Right. So I think you should be able to reference that branch from here. And as long as you don't delete that branch, it, it just hangs out in your fork forever, Then, or at least until this is done, then your your work will not have been lost. Yeah, I pointed to it in my comment. Where oh, is that the here? 
Yeah. Okay. Cool. I, I I'm not gonna try to get my mouse onto that tiny little blue spot. So. Um, <laughs> <laughs> sounds good. Then then I think you've you've done everything. So we would take this in four X if someone wants to pick it up from where Sean got the understanding to. Sure. All right. Okay. Four X. Wix 3.10.3, upgrading from previous version of product fails to install 11 files. Yeah, so this is this support thing. And I'm like, there's nothing that changed <laughs> in from 3.10.2 to 3.10.3 in the core tools that is all in burn. Yeah. Yep. Right. I, asked for, I asked for diffs. Just, yeah, this, is, yeah. this should be on Wix users. <laughs> and, you know, it, it was. It was. And there was no conclusion. So I mean, Steve, that doesn't Steve help it. It's it. not going to get any better here. Well, I yeah. just don't like conversations about there's like something might be wrong. Well, then let's go figure out Wix users, and then you can come back here. So, all right, all right. Just I don't like discussions and bugs. Um, I'm sorry, discussions about what changed because nothing in Wix changed in this area, so it's gonna be very weird. Whatever, if it's in Wix three ten three, it's gonna be very weird. So we also haven't had anybody agree. complaining about it, so it's a little bit I suspect. I also agree. So I'm just, if, 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 as I suspect, there are no differences, then this issue goes away. Great. So what do we do with it? Do we keep it open one more? All right, one more sure. time around. Next week, if it's still around, either we not have either. a bug or not. Yep. Cool. Fine. So we have, what do we have here? We had six bugs and half of them are coming back next week. Woo! Yeah, not great, but whatever. We want more data from people before we basically punt them. So, all right, right. fair enough. Okay, I feel better about that. It's basically we want more data before we punt them, and if we get good data, be like, oh, cool, thank you. Cool, all right, fine. Carrying on. Let's get to the more interesting part of this. Uh, first of all, Wix... V311 plan. Uh, we had 24 issues open at the last meeting, so two weeks ago, and we have seven open now, which is fantastic. <laughs> Superbly fantastic. It was awesome. Like, I didn't see that much progress in a long time. It was very, very cool. Um, of interesting note, there are four of them are assigned to me. <laughs> and that's not to say I've been completely slacking. I have been working on my issues. I've closed at least, you know, four or five, but seven where four are assigned to me, that's pretty good. Um, well, we had on Sunday, it was you, me, Sean, and Jacob all working on um, yeah. pull requests and pushing and running into yeah. conflicts. And, and <laughs> which good. I haven't had in a long time. That was just yeah, right. nice, nice timing, I think. So anyway, yeah. so the issues look fantastic. If you have issues assigned to you, <clears throat> me, uh, you need to go take care of those um, as soon as possible. Um, and things like that. The, we have the date for Visual Studio 2017, which is what 3.11 is about. That is March 7th. So getting rid of those issues uh, before March 7th means, hey, yeah, we're probably good. All right, but that leaves us with the very, very, very large question that has been lingering <laughs> since the beginning of 3.11 of how do we support uh, Votive and Visual Studio 2017? And what do we so do there? before we answer that question, uh, did yeah. you want to go look at the retriage queue? Or do you want to do that? After? No, I'll do it next week. Just give them where it's at right now. Okay. Fair enough. Um, so, yeah. All right. So let's talk about Votive and Visual Studio 2017. Um, as If you're around here, you've probably known Visual Studio 2017 uh, changed how you install VS extensions. And at this point, it, it does appear that they've basically broken it, the ability to do so via an MSI. Um, that is using an MSI to install the files for a VS extension like we've always done for the Wix tool set. So they are, you basically need to move to a V6. So we kind of sat around and, you know, here at Fire Giant, we're talking about, well, what would we do? If we were to reapproach the problem, what would we do? Um, and after kind of some discussion, came up with an interesting idea of, um, that works out like this. So it, those of you that have been hanging around here also know that I've been talking for a while about breaking down the Wix repository into smaller ones. Um, so that was part of the discussion behind this was we were talking about that repository breakdown, or at least thinking about it, and then thinking about it in the context of Votive, and that led us to this um, interesting thought experiment that then turned into an interesting little uh, prototype that ended up working out pretty well. So here's how it went. 
One, we said, let's extract the votive into a new repository. It has lots of more complicated build issues. We don't actually change it very often, so it'd be nice to just have it build it once, and then people can download that one build instead of shipping it every release, all these things. So we're like, great, let's break it out. And whenever you break it out, you then have to say, well, how do you bring it in? And so we went, well, let's not talk about bringing it in. Let's instead build V6s. So then we said, let's build a V6 for each version of Visual Studio. Um, and what that does is you could then say, cool, we'll be able to track each version that uh, people, the V6 that people install uh, from the internet. All right, great. Because one of the questions we have is how many people are actually installing uh, Votive for Visual Studio 2010 because we don't know when we can cut it. All right, like cut 2010 support. Maybe we could cut it now because there's zero installs in the last eight months. We just don't know. So uh, that's the... Um, so that's why we broke them out into separate, and then did some experiments of releasing the five of them to VS Marketplace. They've all since been deleted, so don't go looking for them. Um, so that developers can go find them, um, can go get the Visual Studio integration from the VS Marketplace. This works really nicely within the Tools and Extension Manager, um, where you can search for Wix and it will actually filter which of those five down to the Visual Studio that you are using. The last step then was to remove Votive from the Wix toolset bundle. And we did this thought experiment because installing Votive is by far, like by far the largest part of the install. And we said, if you were to go and get these V6s from the Visual Studio Marketplace, then we wouldn't have to uh, install them all the time because Votive doesn't change that often. So this experiment ended up doing a lot of interesting things, and they're now captured in these two whips that are published, I think. Um, although, yeah, so there's an update to the 5492 out right now. But those are, those are on the web. You can find them. What the benefits we got out of this by extracting Votive into a new repository, creating a separate V6 for each Visual Studio version, and pushing those up on the marketplace and, and not having them in the bundle were a few things. One, it got us consistent across all versions. So that allowed it to say very clearly, this is how you get the Visual Studio extension uh, that it, for the Wix tool set, right? AKA Votive. So you can always get it from Marketplace. Plus, we'll get numbers that are number of people that are installing which versions of which from the Marketplace. Votive as an independent extension then had a few things. One extension supports both Wix v3 and Wix v4, which was very, very, very cool. Not originally intended, but it was really neat because you can install one votive, pick the right template, whether v3 or v4, and the rest of things would work. Another cool thing that happened um, was that you could now install the Visual Studio extension, the Wix Visual Studio extension votive, and whenever you loaded a project, a, a solution that had a Wix project in it, if you were a non-SEP developer, okay, you didn't work on Wix, then you would not get prompted with, hey, there's a project in here that doesn't work. It would just quietly load it. You can't build it without the tools, of course. You have to go get the actual compiler and everything. Um, but with this really tiny extension sitting inside Visual Studio, which Visual Studio is starting to automatically roam your set of extensions and things like that, um, you can create a build configuration, a solution build configuration, that doesn't build the build tools in your solution, but you can still load it without error. And so this has actually come up a number of times when we talk to larger um, customers at FireGiant. They're like, we want to put our Wix project in our solution, not build it on all developer machines, but also not have it fail every time they open it. And so this was an option of, hey, now you can just install this extension across everybody, and it will just work. And they're like, that actually should solve the problem. Here we figure out how to do it. The last thing is that we do plan in Wix 4 to publish an official Wix uh, NuGet package. And so... You can, once you have the Votive extension in, independently, you install the Votive extension. Uh, it now, when you were to build, it'll actually spit out an error saying, hey, you need to go get the build tools. And in Wix 4, you will be able to get the build tools by one of two ways, or both, I guess, but only one will end up working. So one, you can go and download the bundle that we offer for Wix tool set, install it once, and you have it everywhere. Or you can go get the tools via NuGet package that will come up in Wix 4 for that one particular um, solution. And so now you get the option of getting the Wix toolset via both way, whichever works for you. So on where we've seen Wix going out and CI servers and stuff like that, where you know the, the build systems, is, they can install a Wix on the machine 
um, very quickly because there's no the build install time will be way down because there's no Visual Studio uh, integration in there. They can install it in the build machine, and if you want a different version of Wix 4, you can actually use NuGet. And so now that will decouple the build tools from Votive and the Visual Studio integration uh, in a very nice, clean way. Um, so this gave us uh, a bunch, a bunch of of benefits. The one downside. Um, admittedly, is that now to, on a clean machine to get everything you need to work with Votive as a setup developer, to work with Wix as a setup developer, is one, you need to go get Votive, and then you need to get the build tools. And But that getting the build tools may come in one of two ways, so that you get that degree of freedom. So while it's a downside in one case, it's an upside in the other. And that downside seemed to be far less for everything else. All right. So Jacob and John are here and have kind of seen all this. Do you guys have any questions? I, I'm, I'm kind of waiting for John to go plus one or not. I know I've been, you know, wall of talking here, um, things like that. But we've been really happy with just kind of futzing around with this. It's behaved really, really nicely for a bunch of scenarios. Um, the only downside is that on your clean machine, you have to go get votive once, but it ends up being... You know, that one time and then you're good to go. So the discoverability on that may be a little bit of a pickup, which leads me to the next set of open issues. Uh, one of the big questions we had was uh, what to name this. Uh, we actually were, um, Bob and Sean and I were talking about this a little bit this weekend, and I think we, we came down to the, call it the Wix Toolset Visual Studio Year Extension. Because we don't want to call it the Wix Toolset Extension for Visual Studio because there are Wix extensions and that would just be confusing, because there is actually a Wix Visual Studio extension. Anyway, uh, the naming of this is kind of interesting, given that Wix Toolset has extensions, but I think this is the best one, but we're gonna, I'm going to toss this on Wix to see if other people have better ideas uh, for the name. This is the display name, so I'm not terribly worried about it. Uh, until we get closer to ship, we'll have to come up with whatever the file name is. Um, the next question is, um, when do we remove Votive uh, from the 2010 through 2015 from the bundle. So 2010, 2015 are currently installed via an MSI, nice and clean and integrated. When do we make this change such that people uh, now have to deal with the, they have to install twice? One option uh, is to do it sooner in Wix 3.11, which basically goes, here's 2017, Visual Studio has changed the model by which we're supposed to install extensions, aka because of all these decisions they made around V6s. So we have made that shift in Wix toolset. So here's your breaking change in 3.11. Or we can do it later. Um, and I'm, I'm in it. oh, okay. John's already voted sooner is better. Um, Bob, where did you vote? You were voting sooner than later for a while. I don't know if you still are. Uh, I'm voting for consistency. Right. Um, if you have to get um, votive for VS 2017 from the marketplace, uh, I didn't see any reason to be inconsistent with previous versions. Right. So that that's actually the the consistency was a um, big thing. Uh, so Jacob, yes. Yeah, so we were at Fire Giant. We're we're gearing up to do this, and because the prototype is so far along. Um, that that has worked so well for us uh, that we're, we're we're prepared to do this in Wix 3.11, um, even I think by the 7th. So the question then is to break this repository out, which is one of the nice things about this, because your build in Wix will remove all Visual Studio SDK requirements. So those of you that build Wix will no longer need all the Visual Studios. You also won't need all the different versions of Visual Studio to build the core tool set, which is really nice. Um, what do we want to rename the repository? So we've had some discussion about this. Um, the internal namespace to the extension is Wix toolset dot uh, Visual Studio extension. And you'd be like, why isn't it Wix toolset dot Votive as a namespace? Well, there are classes inside Votive that are called Votive uh, as the internal names that are not public names. So we call it the Wix toolset Visual Studio extension as the namespace and then all the stuff inside it. So there's this nice pattern that we've seen in the um, organizations that have split their projects into many repositories. We've seen this pattern where the root of the organization is your top-level namespace, which is actually what the top-level namespace for Wix 4 is, if you've noticed. It actually is Wix toolset. 
and then the repository in there is the next namespace that isolates that repository from other things. So you could imagine this would be Wix toolset dot Visual Studio extension, so it'd be GitHub Wix toolset slash Visual Studio extension. Alternatively, those of us that work on the Visual Studio extension or have dealt with Votive know it as Votive. So it may make more sense for us to call it by its name that we know it, which is Wix toolset slash Votive. So I go back and forth, and I, I think when I ping Sean and Bob off of this, they both kind of split, but I don't know. So I'm I'm open to discussion um, here, looking for input on the name. So once we have this name, then we'll be able to get all of our prototype code cleaned up and pushed into this new repository and get the old code to, and start working on getting the old code deleted. So we can always change the repository name as well. Um, but I was, it's easier if we get it right the first time. Looks like Jacob has said he likes the Visual Studio extension. I don't know which John thinks is better. Right now I'm leaning towards Visual Studio extension as well. All right. I knew you guys were... Sp and so that means that Bob must be the other one, because I was pretty yep. sure you guys split. Visual Studio extension. Yeah, very long for a repo name. It's Git. It should be cryptic, right? <laughs> it's getting it should be cryptic. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> Doesn't have to. Not, not in our world, but yeah. Yeah. What if it's the inner bits that I might it's a, a dirty name? <laughs> a dirty name? What if? It's a great name. It's very pure. Yeah, actually, wasn't that a minor issue? Back in the beginning, it, of, it was uh, it was certainly a question when the very early days of of Wix, when we were paranoid of anything that could be um, uh, of anything that could go wrong. <laughs> we were, misconstrued. We were, we were we were we were concerned that votive could be taken the wrong way. It's never been a problem. <laughs> Nobody. Oh, cares. it was just internal strife. Okay. Well, no, it was just eternal discussion. It was, you know, yeah. when, when Justin created it, right, it was the, I think we should name it this. And I was like, okay. And then I think the Catholic in our group went, do you know what that means? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, uh, no. So he, he had a bit more of a reaction to it than I did. And so we kind of went from there. It's funny. It was, it was just, it was a stop. Everybody stopped and looked at each other kind of like, huh, do we have our own, you know, uh, politically correct issue here. In the end, it never was an issue. So, uh, Ancient story from ancient history. We're talking 1990, nah, probably 2000. Mm, no, when did Justin start? No, it was Justin. 2001? Two? two? He wasn't that long before I joined. Yeah, no, Justin was a little bit later. Anyway, uh, back in the days when it was actually held all in my living room. Okay, so I have a bunch of votes for Stuart session. I'm going to drop this on Wix divs anyway. Uh, just to kind of give it. But so far, what I'm hearing is I don't hear anybody coming up with better names right now. No. Um, That's the um, problem. Yeah, I, 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 I've seen this name in Marketplace, and it's long, but it's actually pretty nice. Uh, it, it's pretty clean when you see it. With Tool Visual Studio, your, your extension, it's, it's pretty clean up there. And it's clear what it is um, when you see it in the... Is it, uh, in the marketplace and the uh, extension manager. Um, and it sounds like right now people are generally voting for let's do this in Wix 3.11 to just get a nice, clean, consistent new world. This was introduced in 3.11. This is the way it now works in 3.11 given the changes that uh, Visual Studio have made. And the repository name kind of leading towards Visual Studio extension. But um, we'll go send these out for a vote and go from there. Did I capture that appropriately, sum it up correctly? Sure. John's typing a book. I don't know that it's a strict vote. I'm I'm more looking for people going, no, this is a bad idea. Yeah, and you know, one of the things that's interesting is the newer Visual Studios, I, I you know, some of these things are starting to sync and stuff, so you know things are it's interesting. All right. Uh, on this front, with this um with this work and everything. We'll be in a good spot. I didn't create a slide for this. I should have created a slide for this. We'll we'll actually be done or you know, in a shippable mode uh, for Wix 3.11. We will have done the features that we said we would do. We will then have those few issues that are left, the seven of them, 
of which four I own and I will continue to work on for the next few weeks. Um, so the question is, do, do people have preferences of when we start announcing things? One of the ideas I threw out was either we can try to ship a RC on the same day that uh, Visual Studio goes out, March 7th. Um, I think we can make that date. Um, or we could call it a beta if we think that we need to call it a beta. Um, I'm 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 open to I, ideas of what people think we should do for the release plan for the rest of this project. I know it's all kind of all coming at all of a sudden, but once we got this proof of concept working, it really kind of clicked for us and went, oh, this is a really nice experience, and this solves all the problems we have of finishing with 3.11. So, yay. Oh, hey, when are we finishing with 3.11? <laughs> it suddenly right. turned into the, hey, we could actually make the 7th, which seemed unattainable in the past. We had so many bugs, and now we're down to so few. Exactly. Think... So many things have gone so well, which is very <laughs> atypical, um, that here we are. Um, also, we have to pick a release date. I was in thinking that it might be fun if we did our release on um, April 1st, um, <laughs> the final release, which then kind of was like, let's do an RC on the day that, or a beta or RC on RTW for uh, Visual Studio 2017, and then April 1st is our final thing, which is about, you know, a month. It will give us hopefully enough time to kind of kick the tires, fix the, you know, templates and things like that that are in votive that might need to get fixed up and so on and so forth. What happens with the V6 if someone installs the older version? So we, we actually tried that, and it does look like your templates get duplicated. So your project new dialog um, is a little, uh, is, is cluttered with all the, uh, with extra uh, templates, so you have your old templates from whatever you installed from Wix 3.10.3 plus the templates that came from the extension. Um, but otherwise, everything seems to work, which was kind of interesting. We think it's because the project registration um, in the package def is the last writer wins, and because Votive is essentially the same code in both of them, you're, you're only getting one loaded into Visual Studio. And we just happen to have two of them stomping over each other inside Visual Studio. The, the registration is stomping over each other to point to different DLLs that are in the end the same. So in the end, it's just like, hey, you have two of the same thing. Only one gets registered. Only one gets loaded. The templates are duplicated because they're in separate folders. And that's well, what the V6 installs to a different place. So probably both exist. Only one is registered right. and gets loaded. Right. Sorry. Yes, that. All the and files the templates exist are on also disk. duplicated. So yeah, yeah, all the files exist on disk. So templates are duplicated. The registration ends up pointing to one of the two DLLs, and that's it. You're done. You only get one DLL loaded in Visual Studio, and everything works great. Uh, Delta the project new dialog. So the answer there is don't install Wix Toolset Visual Studio 2015 extension if you have Wix 3.10. Uh, that is just don't do that is what it turns into. But no harm was done, which also made this a nice story. And no harm was done. Yeah. Can't go back and fix the... Can't go back and change the other ones. Right. Can only move forward. Can only move forward. Um, yeah, I'd like, I'd like to do... Um, I'd like to do an RC as soon as reasonable. I think March 7th is nice. Obviously, it you know, gives us uh, uh, some symmetry with Visual Studio. Um it's a little short between then and April 1st. Uh, it's only three weeks. Um, I wouldn't mind getting something out sooner, get more people exposed to uh, the V6s, essentially. Uh, sooner, so you're saying like in the next week or two? Well, th that's the problem. You know, yeah, that's going to be hard. Like an actual <laughs> beta and then... Well, I, I don't know that it's hard. I mean... Given the number of bugs that we have left in 3.11, could we do, you know, a 3.11 build, call it beta, and be good? Um, obviously, we'd have to check with those really cool people at Fire Giant to find out, you know, what their dates would be um, for, you know, publishing a beta of the V6, V6s, I guess, if that's the correct plural, v 6 in um, I'm not going there. Yeah, um, I'm just I'm curious if if we can do something uh, sooner, just so there's a little bit more big time. Uh, but yeah, if not, we're only talking 
you know, a week or so, I guess, because there are still, you know, a number of bugs in 3.11. And I'd really like to do an actual release candidate where we think we're done, as opposed to a release candidate where we know we're going to keep fixing bugs. Um, so it'd be good to kind of get, you know, well, we can, get to a good spot there. So I, I'm skeptical that we're going to be able to get all this done before the 7th. We might be able to get it done by the 7th, but before the 7th will be challenging. Um, well, sorry, that's why I was suggesting a... No, sorry, I would love an RC on March 7th. Okay, so I, I, I think that we could... something sooner. Right, I think we could try to stick that stake in the ground, and let's go try to hit the 7th, because we'll have another meeting yeah. before then uh, to review all the remaining issues, whatever are left at that point, um, which may be at the point at which we start punting them. Right, this is just not going to get fixed at 3.11, or not. Right, uh, so we could do a release candidate on, try to do a release candidate on the 7th, do another one on the 21st, and then, or so. I'm just looking at like two weeks later, even one week later. I mean, if we get feedback, we can push it out quickly. Yeah. Um, and then the first is a Saturday, which is actually pretty nice. Um, so, so. I, I, I think we could get two RCs in that month of March. That sounds good to me. Uh, I'm a little concerned about trying to do two RCs in three weeks, but well, that's again, basically. that's why I was, I was. I would like to see something a little sooner than March seventh, even if it's not an RC. I agree, an RC on March seventh is good. That should definitely be our, our you know, target. Um, I'm not sure that, you know, we can do another... We can do another release, obviously, in the month of March, but it's not going to, you know... You don't think uh, it's going to move the dial much? I don't think, yeah, I don't think it, it gets a lot of attention. Well, I don't... The, the one advantage we have is if we think most of the issues are going to be in uh, Visual Studio, in the votive extension mm -hmm. in all this, uh, the nice thing is that when we push updates to the marketplace, they'll get notified. Yes, very true. So there will be that benefit. Yep. Oh, something I didn't put on here. Anybody have a uh, what version we should stick on Votive? That's, I forgot, totally forgot about that space that. But it's actually one of the big open issues we have. What version should this thing be? Because it now spans three and four. <laughs> Could, should we go back to one? Um, oh, we... that would just be really confusing because there was <laughs> never we... a votive version one. <laughs> That's well, that'd be great. Uh, should we go? Should we go to four? Uh, we can't go to five because uh, there's no. F we can still set five. That would just be weird. Um, we don't have to expose this version number. I don't think it shows up anywhere. But um, I don't know what version number to put on the DLLs here. Um, I I would suggest three. For now, three eleven. So keep its well, current number. I was just going three. Oh, <laughs> three. The minor can, version. We can do yeah. three. Uh, I, I guess where I was going is um, we can do three for now, and then once four is our major focus, we can renumber it. Um, in effect, it doesn't matter, right? Theoretically, and this is actually really, <laughs> really interesting <laughs> for for all of. Um, <coughs> Sorry. For all of our talk about about you know Wix three X and 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 Wix four, you know most or at least half of the Wix three X releases we've done since three seven have been to support Visual Studio. Um, and if we're moving Votive out, that's something we don't have to do anymore. That's correct. So I. I this this is this whole thing is very interesting. Um, I, but I, maybe happens, I should have called that as a benefit, but yeah, it's it's yeah. Well, well, I mean, we're we're kind of yeah. It is a benefit, I think, because um, it means people theoretically can keep you know moving forward as long as we have you know some amount of compatibility um, between Votive and newer versions of Visual Studio. 
puts the velocity where it belongs. That's actually a nice way of saying what that. John, you should read the repository reorganization spec because that is what it. You, you you summed it up pretty well. What the repository reorganization is trying to say is the the puts the velocity where it belongs. I think that's a good way of. It's a nice overview of it. Um, and this votive thing kind of came out of that line of thinking to this point, which is what Bob is hitting as well. So, all right, so I'm I'm fine with three. Uh, I'll, I'll put on the list of things that I'll ask on this. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm waffling on that. Um, I'm almost thinking of that, that doing, uh, you know, like, uh, I don't know if we want to do a one dot or, or just embrace uh, um, browser versioning. But <laughs> Start at 55? Um, anybody? There we go. <laughs> Um, but again, you know, voting is something that doesn't change a whole lot. No, it's actually it hasn't. It hasn't in changed in the past so, couple of yeah. years. Yeah, so it's not going to. The numbers aren't going to go out of control. No. We got I, was thinking, you expect, I was thinking either one or five because you know it's the first version where you can look at it like we've already released Votive for in Wix 3 and 4, so then you would start at 5. Cause it's I really new. don't want to do 5. I, I really don't want to do 5. What happens when Wix 5 comes out? Yeah, I just, I don't, yeah, because there will, the, we talk about a Wix 5, right? So I don't, I really don't want to do 5. Um, I really don't want to do 5. <gasps> Votive <laughs> X. 10? Okay. No, I X. I can't put... No, let's be very, very, very clear. There is no visible version number in any of this. This is purely about what DLL version do we put on it for engineering purposes. When we see it, we what do we see, right? I think that would be weird to call it 10. This is why, I I mean, I wasn't joking about 1, because it does feel like we've reset Votive. Yeah, here's, yeah, Votive. yeah. Here's 1. Have a nice day. Actually, in, we might in the Wix 3.11 time frame, we might call it zero. <laughs> Sorry, the in the on March 7th might make zero and then have one when we finally get to an actual what we think is an RC, but neither here nor there. Um, anyway, it'd be the well, first. Like we're gonna we're not we're not gonna run into any conflicts with you know resetting the version number. No, it's only itself. So, do V6 packages have a version that we have to worry about? Uh, yes. But that's just to move themselves forward, right? And these are again the v1 of our v6 packages, exactly. Hmm. Okay, yeah, you could convince me there because they, you can't. You, we can't use the same one for the MSI because the MSI one is marked installed by MSI and can't be taken over. Right. So right. we have to use a whole new ID for our v6. Yep. Yeah, All right. Yeah, you, you could convince me of that. All right. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna put that as a stake in the ground for the version number, um, and also that we're gonna try to do an, a release uh, RTW to match Visual Studio RTW. We're gonna try to have a votive as well, and a Wix build at the same time. It, it, we're gonna try to have RC of Wix and the extension by March seventh. Okay. With as many a real RC, where we're not planning to make any more changes or. Let's have that discussion the week before on the okay. like, next meeting. Like, I mean, that's, that's what we're right. going to decide, yeah, yeah. right? That's what we're going yeah. and, and it may be that we degrade the March 7th to, uh, our, to beta if we don't want to call it RC. Okay. So will the extension be some kind of pre-release or whatever, however you mark it to where it's not a stable version? Uh, I, I don't think I have it. I don't think I'm going to bother. I'm not sure the marketplace does that. I didn't look. I haven't looked myself at that. But um, I don't think it will bother because it's new. You're only going to find it if you know to go find it. Right. That's true. I guess you could. someone could search for Wix tools that find this new thing and be like, what is this? But that'd be great because then we start getting tested. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> it's just like, did it work? No, file a bug. Oh, where do I file? You know, so file the bug, we'll fix it, and we'll ship that much better on April 1st. There's also a spot where we just don't care anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and we just make changes to vote of and fix them and publish them. Well, I think that's what happens naturally, right, once you get to a, a, a somewhat stable point. I mean, there are a lot of votive bugs, and what we've seen is, again, over the course of years, 
eventually some of them get fixed. Like we just took a fix for a very old, long-standing bug in uh, in Votive. Yep. Because someone finally got annoyed enough. Yep. All right. Cool. So I think we have a plan here. Um, I'm going to summarize it, get a mail out probably tomorrow, the way things are going. Um, and we'll have a new repository showing up in the not-too-distant future, uh, very not-too-distant future, with all this stuff in it. Um, and then, hopefully not too long after that, a delete on the Wix 3 and Wix 4 repositories. And, oh my gosh, does it install so much faster. You would not believe it, especially if you have multiple versions of Visual Studio. It's like, oh, this is what the installer should have been all the time. <sighs> Actually, right. when you install V6, does it have to do the equivalent of dev and setup, or is it smarter than that? No, it, do, it does what we did in Wix 4, where we touch that file. Yeah. So Wix 4 yeah, actually yeah. scales much faster. But V6 actually turns out is kind of slow um, when it's searching for what it can, what it can install into. Mm -hmm. So, it, like, again, it, it's not as slow as DevM setup, but it's not as fast as like any of our MSIs. All of our MSIs install faster than V6 does due to, to its startup time. It's really weird. <laughs> It's like, yeah, okay, whatever. Their detection takes a little bit. Um, so, all right, cool. Anything else? Things people want to talk about? I know we've had an exciting time here. The the fixing of issues so quickly and this approach to it has been really nice, like really pleasantly surprising that we can now try to do something to make people happy with Wix on Visual Studio 2017. Yeah, I was I was doubtful that we were going to be anywhere close. Um, to March 7th. Yeah, the conversation on Wix devs when we were hoping that some solution would come from Visual Studio team themselves was um, was a little discouraging. But I think we're in a good place now. Well, I, I know we're in a good place now. This feels really nice. Plus, we're yeah. going to get a lot of other things we like, like, as John puts it, which I really like, puts the velocity where it belongs. <laughs> this could be the tag yeah. name for a spec. That's why I should have called my whip. <laughs> All right. No, I'm just happy that I won't need Visual Studio 2010 anymore. Uh, yeah, well, going forward, yeah, we'll get to a place where you won't need any of them eventually. When, when we get that right. repository thing, you won't need, you'll only need one copy of Visual Studio. Yay. I guess unless you want to work on Dino with all different versions, but anyway. Time for another place, another time. All right, uh, it doesn't look like anybody has anything else, so we are at almost well, 50 minutes, so it's a longer meeting, but it was kind of expected when we were going to start talking about books through 11 and the plan and a real world. Very glad everybody made it this week. Uh, this feels pretty good. I'm kind of excited about uh, Wix 3.11 now, where I was you know, kind of struggling before. I'm feeling pretty good. This is going to be good. Fun release, and we'll get some, you know, we'll see what people say about it. Um, I'm pretty confident it's going to turn out well, but you know, we could go maybe lash back people like, no, you can't do it this way. But I think it's going to be pretty good. All right. On that resounding sentiment of confidence, uh, we're going to sign off. Uh, we'll be back here in two weeks, the 28th, but there will be stuff on Wix devs. Uh, if you have any issues, which I think that's mostly just me, uh, go work on those, um, me. S and uh, until two weeks, we'll see you guys on Wix devs. Bye. Bye. Bye.